Wait, who? You worked at Ragamuffin with Flatbush? Yeah, that's crazy. If you from Brooklyn, Ragamuffin, it's the only place you can go get you some cloth. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to Sauce Talk. I'm Chief Director of Merchandise here at Vice. And this is a very, very special episode of Sauce Talk. I got my homies, Kirby Jean Raymond and Jason Rember with me. They're like pretty big deals in the fashion industry. By the way, because of y'all niggas, I don't never have three cameras. I ain't never had no three cameras in my life. <laughs> I feel like I'm at Hofstra all over again because we all went to school together. Yo, shit. Car in Hofstra. Yes. Like one car. One car. Blue Beetle. Who had that? I ain't no Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, man. What the hell are you talking about? The Blue Beetle is the bus that took us from the Hempstead. Oh, train. yeah. <laughs> you saw the TV show? You forgot where you came yeah, from? Yeah, I forgot where I came yeah. from. I was a little too good. I took that a lot. <laughs> you you took, took that shit a lot. In Hofstra, uh, first, first year, I applied for Vibe, right. but they denied me twice. One night, I was up like 3 o'clock in the morning, I had a paper to do, and I checked on this site called ed2010.com, and they had an internship for L Magazine, and I didn't even know what L was, and I applied. Next morning, I went to the interview, took a long journey to the city, didn't even have the money for it. By the time I got back to campus, I got the internship. Speaking of Vibe, it was the only magazine that would actually point out the high-end brands that we never knew about. I think the only stylist I knew of was like Puffy's girlfriend, was name? Lisa, Lisa in, June. in June. That was yeah. it. That was Yo, it. Crazy. I just got a missed call from June. <laughs> no bullshit. That's flex. Valid. Flex. Humble. When I was like 11 or 12 years old, I found out that Tinker designed the 11s, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know people did this. Like, I didn't think that there was like really artistry behind it. When I found out that that was a job and that was a, a thing, I, I made that a mission for me. Long story short, I applied for high school fashion industry because they had a jewelry and, and shoe design program. Miss Miss Z told me about an internship, and that was at Camden, New York. When I went, you know, on a Saturday to like help them like organize their closets and everything like that, me and Camden ended up doing lunch together. So we kind of like had like a mind melt for like two hours. And she was after that conversation, and she was like, you know what, you'll be my apprentice. At 15, she hired me as an assistant designer at K Younger. That was what I was doing every day after school for like two, three hours, on top of having to go to work at Ragamuffin. I want to get back to like the word and the career of being a stylist, you know what I'm saying? Because some people think you can just go borrow clothes, throw it on somebody, and then boom, you're a stylist. No, you're not a fucking stylist. Jason, can you do me a favor and break it down to them like really on dead ass what a stylist really does? My job entails more than anything emails. So it's like, I probably, <laughs> like, I'll probably start my emails like 6 a.m. in the morning, Milan and Paris, London. It's World Net accounts lit, because I use net. it. <laughs> Guaranteed. Net. Probably like at 9 a.m. I start with America. When you're working with a celebrity, most of the VIP houses is in L.A. And then depending on the job, I'm going shopping for it. Barney's or Bergdorf or Saks. Take note, there's no Macy's in that mix. There's no <laughs> H&M in that mix. Those brands, if it's called for, it's called for it. Really? Yeah, if it's like. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what brand names it is, he's creating an image for somebody. And I've watched Jason work. He's in there working the room. Getting a moment. Yeah. So, you know, the fashion space is kind of like where it starts, and then like that might need to an endorsement or a campaign or whatever the case is. So essentially, he's the first stop in them getting the check. And like, Big facts, because I'm going to keep it 100. That. Like, boy, oh boy, did my man OBJ's life change drastically. You like, can tell. Now you can tell when Jason starts dressing to so somebody's like, they just Turn up. I'm like, man, your pants fit better. So like you worked with cross colors and um probably the newer generation would know what the hell we are talking about, you know what I'm saying? But what were some of the things that, you know, drew you to them and like inspired y'all to even like bang with each other? So I bought my company back in 2017. Prior to that, I, was, I had like very limited control over like what Pierre Moss looked like because we didn't have, we were underfunded. I wasn't able to create a lot of my designs. And at that point, I probably had like 17 bucks to my name. This was like 2017. So- Nigga, this um, is two years ago. This two years ago. All right, say less, yeah. carry on. And then like, you know, fast forward, uh, I ended up getting a Reebok deal when I used my, my Reebok contract to, to cop my company back. You didn't spend the flip money, yeah. fuck boys. Yeah. You don't do that. I wanted the company to mean something. I wanted to stand for something. So we so we started working on this con this um, this concept called American Also. Collection one, we focused on the black cowboy. And collection two, we focused on the black family. So what's the third one about? You'll see. Oh. Yeah. We talk about these American brands like Ralph and, right. and Tommy and all this different shit, but Cross Colors was making $250 million a year. FUBU was making Wild paper, mm -hmm. rock and roll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like there were so many dope brands that, and I was like, I'm gonna make it my business to highlight one of them in every collection. 
I mean, I think for me, I'm a support, always, always the underdog. I remember last year for CFDA, the day that Issa came out as the host, every brand hit me up. But guess who you chose? You know me? You got to nah, kick it with your homies. Yeah. yeah. I know their homies. And, you know and, and, and that's what it is about. You know what I mean? Did she just wear yours or did she wear... She, she, she wore a few. She, she, wore, she wore Pierre Moss on the red carpet. And then when yeah. she got in through, she had like multiple outfit changes. So he highlighted a lot of people that people didn't know. Giving back, sending the elevator back down to help others come up. Like, that's probably my biggest focus right now. So I seen that you had on um, on, the, on the Met Gala. On the back, it was like, buy back the block. It said, it said, fix your credit, pull money, and buy back the block. And somebody wrote, this is Jay-Z politics. And you know what? I know Jay-Z politics, because I know Jay-Z. And I love Jay-Z's politics. He's not making excuses, and he's he parlayed a, a stereotypical career path into an industry and became a business and became a, a, a thing because he kept on reinvesting. You know what? I always say this is like, and I tell people this a lot, you know what I mean? I have like a lot of ignorant moments on this shit, but like I'm dead ass. I've seen what it's like to go from the corner store to the country club. If you can't, you know, adapt, adapt you're going to be fucked in this industry. You understand me? Adapting Take it, with integrity. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. you, you still have to be you. You have to be you. This, this episode is a lesson in code switching. Now. <laughs> and that's it, people. I'm done. So good right there. Jason Rembert, Kirby G. Raymond, Sauce Talk. We out. I'm good. I'm hungry.